I think that's my big takeaway for today is can you just keep variety so that you don't burn out? Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Health Podcast, episode 180. Jesse Chapp is here with Marty Wasserman, and we are here on a weekly basis to take your health to the next level. This week, our featured guest is Julie Daniluk. She is on the show for a fourth time, and she is not only a good friend, but she's also the award-winning best-selling author of Meals That Heal Inflammation, which has helped over 100,000 people enjoy delicious, allergy-free foods to assist the body in the healing process. She is also the author of Slimming Meals That Heal, and her latest book is titled Hot Detox. Julie has appeared on hundreds of television and radio shows, including The Dr. Oz Show, and she's a resident expert for The Maryland Dennis Show. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with Julie, and she's not only our good friend, but she is also a wealth of knowledge. And we got to do this interview in person with her, which is amazing because we have the best time when we're together. And we did this interview over at her parents' house, which Jesse and I get the opportunity to spend lots of time there. And because we're all on the same page, we eat well, we have so much fun. And it's just so great. So in our conversation today, we're talking about performance enhancement. Julie is all about taking everything in her life to the next level and specifically her performance. So here's what we get into on today's show. It's time to double down on omega-3s because 8% of your brain is made up of them. We talk about why you want to have plenty of bone broth in your life. We get into what it means to earn your carbohydrates. We talk about adaptogens and how to improve performance without the crash of caffeine. And we also get into why it's time to stop fearing quality sea salt. So much great information, so much more that we get into. So here we go with Julie Daniluk. Julie, it's so great to be in your home. We're here. We're in an intimate setting. This is going to be a lot of fun. Welcome back to the show. Round number four. (laughs) Jesse, Marnie, it is the best experience to share all this incredible knowledge because we just want to be contribution to people to make sure that their performance gets where we know it can be, which is the stratosphere. So let's talk about that. Why is performance such an exciting part of some of your studies and findings these days? Like we know you, we know you're all about performance, whether you're going on TV, getting on stage, whether you're jumping out in the pool in the backyard. What is it about performance that has you so jacked up right now? Because I want people to have an Olympic life. I know that they can be as energetic as they were in their teens. And if they just knew the nutritional steps to get there, their whole life could open up. They could transform. And so I just am so thrilled you had me back because I know it's rare to have a fourth time on your show because you've got the best podcast ever. Well, I think this is actually our first time hitting number four. So congrats. Thank you. It's an honor. Let's start with inflammation. First of all, you are the inflammation queen. And we've talked quite a bit in your previous shows about the anti-inflammatory diet. So as it relates to performance, what is one of the number one things that we can take to help with inflammation for performance? I think the number one thing, change your fat. So many people are having a very high saturated fat diet that's causing a very stiff phospholipid layer, I want everyone to really double down on their omega-3. Omega-3 is powerfully anti-inflammatory. It actually helps to open up your airways so that you have less asthma. It helps your heart work better. It helps to thin your platelets. It helps to really make sure that you have a good balanced blood pressure. It helps your brain light up. Did you know that it increases dopamine? It increases serotonin synthesis when it's alongside vitamin D, that is. It just is absolutely extraordinary. There's more science on omega-3 than virtually any other supplement. But I want everyone to remember that omega-3 is not just a pill. It is actually a vitamin that we must have. It's vitamin F. It's essential for life. 8% of our brain is omega-3. That's like huge for me. Like, I hope that people at home are like, 8%? How can less than 1% of our diet be omega-3 if it makes up 8% of our brain? Because back in the Paleolithic period, we were one part omega-6 and one part omega-3. In today's world, we're 20 times the amount of omega-6 for only one part omega-3. And that ridiculously tough difference in ratio, because omega-3 is profoundly anti-inflammatory, It just can't hold down all the inflammation considering there's 20 times the omega-6 trumping it. 
Well, let's break down omega-3s. There's three different types, ALA, DHA, and EPA. So when we're talking omega-3s here, are you talking about all three or a specific one? I love all three, but I do want to really touch on the fact that ALA has to become EPA and DHA through an enzymatic conversion process. So you actually need a boatload of vitamin B, zinc, magnesium, iron to turn your ALA, your vegan type, your plant-based omega-3 into EPA and DHA. That is so difficult, especially for a vegetarian or a vegan. Let's face it, one third of women on the planet are anemic. And men, we always talk about anemia for women. You guys are zinc deficient, so zinc deficient because you either lose zinc because you're drinking alcohol or you're having a good time. You might be losing a little bit of male juice from time to time because you're in love with your partner and that drops your zinc stores. So between those two deficiencies, we have a terrible problem with not converting ALA into that EPA. And you got to get it there, by the way. If it stays ALA, it's not going to be an anti-inflammatory. It has to become EPA. And in that profound state of turning into EPA, I want everyone to remember the acronym. It eats pain away. EPA eats your pain away. And in that state, it can do everything from reduce your depression, your anxiety, to helping your actual performance in the gym or in your next race. It's so interesting you bring up EPA because pretty much every time omega-3s come up on the show, it seems that we go down the DHA route. So why is EPA so important? Well, we're really starting to see new studies emerge that EPA is such a profound anti-inflammatory. We used to think DHA is for the brain, and it is. But it turns out that the EPA is what's responsible for reducing depression risk because it's turning off the inflammation of the brain. And for aging athletes, we have to remember that it also helps to build muscle mass, which is something we recently learned, and it helps to keep bone in place. So hold on a second. Most women are scared of osteopenia, osteoporosis. We're all worried about sarcopenia, which is actually muscle wasting as we age. So here we've got the one solution that's literally helping us from our hair to our toenails. So how do we go about getting this? This all sounds great. Is it through supplementation? Is it through like a fish oil supplement? Is it through different foods reading? How do we go about getting enough? I love food and I'll always start with food first, but I will say that unfortunately with omega-3, we don't have a lot of sources. When I mention EPA, you really are talking about seafood, certainly small cold water fish and LG. Those are the big places to extract EPA. And thank goodness, they finally figured out how to make EPA in a tank with really good quality LG for all the environmentalists, for all the vegans and vegetarians, for the people allergic to fish. They finally figured out an LG oil that's actually got an equal ratio of EPA to DHA for the very first time. We used to have to try to convert it, and now we've got it pre-converted for you, which is great. And then there's all the other foods like avocado and walnuts and flax and chia. And we can improve our conversion rates on those by keeping in mind what cofactors we need. So just make sure to bump up your B vitamins, your zinc, your iron, your magnesium. And presto, you can turn more ALA into EPA and DHA. Amazing. Other foods I want to talk about that are also anti-inflammatory, and I know you're a big fan of these and Often when we're together, we consume them. So turmeric and bone broth. I want to talk about the benefits of those guys and how we can include them, especially for performance and just overall health. It's so great to see the latest studies on turmeric because more and more we're, we're seeing how it works like a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or what we know as an NSAID for short. NSAIDs are very dangerous. And just recently, I was shocked to see they finally saw in the data, the nurses study, the very famous nursing study where I can't believe NSAIDs reduces your hearing. NSAIDs actually reduce your nitric oxide. It's so hard on your stomach lining that it can cause an ulcer. The great news is, is that you can have that reduction of inflammation from turmeric if you just double down on it. So like omega-3, people aren't taking enough of the turmeric. To really have enough omega-3 do its job to reduce pain, you got to go between 3,000 to 6,000 milligrams of EPA-DHA combined. And for elite bodybuilders who are 
strong and big, they go up to nine grams to really compensate for all that omega-6 in the world. Back to turmeric, it's a power punch when you put them together because when you put turmeric, which is really well absorbed when you put it with a fat, that's when it can really reduce your pain. It actually has been shown to reduce your pain if you go up between one and two grams of enhanced curcumin turmeric per day. That's when we see over a three-month trial, aging athletes having half the amount of arthritic pain. So if you have painful knees, combine that turmeric with the omega-3 and just see your runs get better. Wow, that's incredible. Is there any benefit to actually taking turmeric root and say making a tea out of it or taking like a turmeric powder and adding that into stir fries and different foods? There absolutely is. One thing I'd really love people to do is enjoy more turmeric paste mixed down with their favorite fat. So could you sneak it into your shakes when it's cold or could you shake it into your hot smoothie soups that really give you that extra potency? But do remember for people who have challenged digestive linings, they may need to go to that 95% curcumin, which is the active component within the turmeric that you can absorb really easily. And I'm sure turmeric combined with bone broth being also, it's got some good fat in there, is also an amazing combination. So let's talk about bone broth and how amazing and anti-inflammatory that is. Yes, my bone broth has turmeric right in it. I'm so in love with that because bone broth is so healing for the gut lining, for the joints, for the skin, you name it. You want to have lots of bone broth in your life. You're borrowing the cartilage of animals. And they actually did this really cool study recently. They did a radio tag on the collagen within the bone broth. And then they watched an animal consume it and saw that it actually found its way to your joint cartilage. Because people wondered, do you break down all the amino acids and then it rebuilds? Like, what's the mechanism? It turns out that bone broth ends up where it needs to be in your joints. It rebuilds your joints. So not only do we see joint repair, but we also see the glycine light up our brain. So glycine and proline are the beautiful ingredients within bone broth that truly heal you. Glycine is so important, and so many people are exposed to glyphosate or a pesticide known as Roundup. And bone broth provides extra glycine to compensate and help to heal that. And then we also have that wonderful proline that your body uses to repair what's broken in your body. So that's why I'm a huge fan. And I know you are too. Yeah. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like the four of us bond over bone broth. There's a place in, in Toronto where we go and meet up yeah. and we, we all get a cup full of bone broth and we sip on it. And it's just such a nice way to nourish ourselves, have good conversations. Yeah. But there's nothing better than a homemade bone broth or something that you can get maybe on the go too. I know there's there's now packaged forms like Kettle and Fire. So there's other forms that yeah. you can get, especially for people who don't necessarily want to make it from scratch. But bone broth, you know, I love hearing your explanation of that because I think people understanding just how healing it can be to the body is so important. So even if you don't want to consume animal protein, you know, drinking it in liquid form can be really beneficial. I highly recommend just take it as your base and then just throw veggies in it. And therefore you have a real meal. Like one of my favorite things to do is just top it with piles and piles of broccoli sprouts because broccoli sprouts have 50 to 100 times the amount of sulforaphane. And sulforaphane not only repairs you, not only detoxes your liver, but also is a mild nootropic that's really going to help your brain. So you want that extra power, lean into the veggies alongside your bone broth. Julie, I want to get into your obsession with free diving. This is such a unique thing. You don't hear about a lot of people free diving. Where did this come from and how often are you doing it? It was interesting. I had a year where I lost five family members in one year and I was really blue and I needed a challenge to knock me out of that state. And I also wanted something that stilled my mind so I could hear the kindness and the love between the thoughts because, you know, your thoughts aren't always kind. And I just was so moved when I put my face in the water and could just make that sadness just go. I highly recommend a documentary called Fish People. So I've always been a scuba diver, but the tanks are really getting annoying and it's really dangerous because you can end up breathing too much oxygen, nitrogen at depth, and then it's hard to come up. So free diving is so perfect, so natural, so amazing, and so adrenaline rushing. I fell head over heels in love with it. So what are some of the things you've tried over the years to boost your performance when you're doing this activity? Well, you really got to have a ton of oxygen on board. 
So there's a breathing practice that I do that really stills my mind beautifully. It's called alternate nostril breathing, and it's borrowed pranayama, borrowed from the yogis. We tried this with you. It's you have an so app for it. It's so fun. Yeah, I love it. What's it's the name delightful. of that Delightful. That's Unified Breathing app. I think there's a free version, so you can definitely go download that. So this is truly brilliant for free diving because I know a lot of people are in love with Wim Hof breathing right now, but the danger that is if you take on too much oxygen, if you're hyper, hyper ventilated, unfortunately you can black out when you're swimming to the surface so alternate nostril breathing is way more comforting and way more safe so all you do is hold one nostril closed breathe in slowly really listen to the counting because that's going to help you relax you don't have to do anything where i find a lot of people try to meditate really hard where alternate nostril breathing you're counting and the counting gets you away from your negative self-talk so You'll love that. And then when you get ready, you'll learn how to duck dive, how to clear your ears. And then you just feel like a fish and you get to see dolphins and turtles and you name it. It's so joyful. Is there any specific supplements or different foods you've tried that have helped with your performance? Ketones. These beautiful extra therapeutic ketones. And I know you guys are in love with ketones. We're flying high on ketones right now. We took ketones before the interview. (laughs) Yes, they definitely help our brains. We uh, take them before pretty much every interview now. Yeah, it's so good, right? Because ketones uh, are a secondary fuel source. Go back and listen to Dom D'Agostino's episode. It was the best. I love that episode. Ketones are a secondary fuel source. So your body has carbohydrates, typically that glucose that spins into ATP. Know that ketones help you make extra ATP so that you have tremendous performance, way more than you could ever think possible. I'm sure that's why There's a whole new level of breaking Olympic records as people get into understanding that ketones will not only help you have extra performance in the moment, but also help keep your brain on. You're just firing on all cylinders. Isn't that one of your favorite reasons to take it? Yeah, I've definitely felt that. The crazy thing is, is I've learned through experimentation and Marnie might want to comment to this. I'm not great on like a full on keto diet. You're using an exogenous ketone, which is what we are as well, too. We're using the perfect keto. How does that fit in in addition to the diet where Mm -hmm. you're either eating maybe, you know, we're all here eating a very healthy, clean (laughs) diet. That's what we live for. Mm -hmm. So eating a mostly fat fueled diet, so to speak, with a little bit of that incorporation of carbohydrates. So let's maybe talk about that. Like, what does the diet for performance look like with that little bit of carbohydrate? I actually am combining beet juice with the ketones. So I'm getting two fuel sources at the same time. You're a fan of slow carbohydrates. So let's talk about what some of those are. I absolutely love using squash because it's so easy to digest. And I'm a huge fan of enjoying slow fruit, like blueberries are incredible. Obviously a very good performance enhancer as well. And slowing those down. So using a shake where you can mix your fuel sources is just so brilliant. So you can have your fast burning, maybe having a touch of honey, some dates in there because dates are just amazing, good for B vitamins, fiber, and slowing that down with the good fat and protein all in one shake. So is the goal just to make it clear for everyone to keep the ratio of those carbohydrates on the lower side and making sure the fat is more or less dominating, whether it's your plate or a shake, especially if you're trying to live a relatively balanced ketogenic <laughs> lifestyle, mm-hmm. or let's call it fat fueled, or for performance, maybe just a little bit of date or maybe some sweet potato on your plate. Absolutely. And I also just want to say that earn your dates, earn your carbohydrates. So really gear the amount of carbs to the specific activity you're about to go into. So if it's free diving, if it's running a race, you're going to obviously really allow yourself a lot more pleasure there because you've got that. So I've got a great shake that's right in the handout that I'll provide in the show notes so that people know my specific performance shake before I go free diving. That'd be great. And before we go too far, I want to dive into the beet juice thing here, because back in the day when I was running marathons, I know before one of my races, I actually got into taking beet juice. I think I had maybe a bottle a day, maybe five, seven days out from my race. I don't know if that was long enough to really have an impact or whatnot, 
But why are endurance athletes using beet juice to enhance their performance? There's some great science on that. I'm so glad you asked me, Jesse. Did you know that we now see with 500 mils, which is two cups in the United States, two cups of beet juice right before a race, you see a performance enhancement of 3%. That's the difference between making a podium or not making the podium. And that's across the board, whether you're running, whether you're swimming, whether you're if you're a biker, so triathletes, listen up. You've got to have that wonderful beet juice. You've got that instant fuel, but you also have a tremendous source of nitrates, natural nitrates. And the nitrates help you fuel your nitric oxide in your body. So that's why we're going specifically for beets. And for those low carb people, for people on the ketogenic plan, then really enjoy lots of beet greens and arugula that are exceptionally high in natural nitrates. Now we're going to take a quick break from our chat with Julie to give a shout out to our show sponsor, Thrive Market. Thrive Market has such incredible products. The deal you get as a listener of our show is amazing. So if you aren't taking advantage, why not? And the best part is, is that Thrive is easy and accessible online. You are doing all of your grocery shopping from the comfort of your own home. And in today's episode with Julie, we talk a lot about adaptogenic herbs. And I made sure that Thrive Market was well stocked up. Of course they are because they have everything with things like ashwagandha and maca and they have them and you can get them in powder, pale or tincture form. And we also talk about some of the best anti-inflammatory foods to include into your diet, such as turmeric and fish oil. And you can stock up on those as well at Thrive Market. And you're getting all of these products at 20 to 50 percent off of regular retail value. And as a listener of our show, you get another 25% off your order. You get a free one-month membership and free shipping. This incredible deal, unfortunately, is only for our U.S. listeners. Thrive Market's only available in the U.S. as of now, but the products are amazing again, and the deal is incredible. So to take advantage of your listener discount, go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash Thrive Market. Again, that's ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash Thrive Market. Go and take advantage right now. And now we're going to give a shout out to our other show sponsor, Kettle and Fire. And today we have a special guest, co-founder, Justin Mayers. Justin, so great to connect with you. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me on the show. So to start off, why did you and your brother start Kettle and Fire? What was the inspiration here? So my brother had experienced a really bad knee injury. He was playing soccer and tore his ACL, MCL, and was looking for different foods or things that could help accelerate his recovery. He was better in for about seven weeks after surgery. And so around this time, I was looking for something that could improve my digestion and gut health. And, you know, so we both came across bone broth. It was a product we wanted. And at the time, no one was selling it. And so that's when we decided, you know, hey, it looks like there's demand. And this is a product that we want to incorporate into our lives. And yet no one is making it. Let's do that. So why bone broth? What are the key nutrients in bone broth that makes it so special? So bone broth has a really unique amino acid and protein profile. So unlike pretty much anything else you get in your diet, bone broth, because it's made from connective tissue, bones, you know, and bone marrow, has a unique composition of amino acids, proteins, things like collagen, glycine, glutamine, glucosamine, gelatin, all of these key amino acids that even if you eat a pretty healthy diet, you're just not getting in fruits, vegetables, or most cuts of meat. Yeah, it's very powerful stuff. And our listeners get a really incredible deal, 20% off. This is for our US listeners only, but they get free shipping as well. Super easy to take advantage. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash bone broth. Again, that's ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash bone broth. And now back to our show with Julie. So in terms of the form, you're talking about beet juice. So would raw beets, roasted beets, and also I'm seeing now beet powders. Of course, uh, the industry is baking on this and actually making products with beet powder in it or a straight up source of beet powder. So what about the different sources or is beet juice the number one? Well, I really think that the advantage of beet powders would be that you have the nitrates, but you don't have necessarily as many carbohydrates. So I see the allure there. And I will say that I've seen some new nitric oxide supplement products that you place under your tongue. And that's like rocket fuel for me. You have to be careful because you have a lot of vasodilation going on. And that's combined with citrulline and arginine. And those two amino acids combined with the nitrates are literal rocket fuel. Because if you use something like garlic on a regular basis, garlic helps with nitric oxide synthase. And that 
potentiates all this amazing arginine and citrulline. You've got so much nitric oxide, you're unstoppable. Another thing that back in the day I used to take was cordyceps mushroom. So I was taking a supplement along with the beet juice. I really got into it, I guess, for this one race. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, what are your thoughts on using cordyceps to enhance performance? And is this something you've tried at all? Yeah, isn't cordyceps crazy? I can't believe that we're actually eating something that normally grows out of the head of a bug. I just have to call it out. It is so bizarre that something that's stressful in nature can be so helpful to the human body. But yes, it's incredible as a nootropic, incredible for performance enhancement. And remember that all medicinal mushrooms are rich in beta-glucans, and these beta-glucans are tremendously beneficial for your immune system, and that's going to balance your immune system, which is so important for people who are fighting autoimmunity and for all of those endurance athletes who truly want to avoid those terrible flus post-race. Yeah, I know specifically I've been taking cordyceps for my antibodies. So having Hashimoto's, that's been a big factor in my protocol to include it for glutathione production. So I'm guessing that's exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely. And for those people who are just learning about glutathione, glutathione is so important for your liver, for your immune system. It's, it's such a key. Another way you can potentiate it is by having lots of milk thistle. Milk thistle increases glutathione by 35%. For those ladies who are really struggling with poor cycles, know that it actually reduces heavy menstrual bleeding, which is very important for female athletes. Anemia is something we battle all the time. As a female athlete, we have to consider that if we're anemic at all, we can't carry the amount of oxygen we need in our blood because we just don't have the iron holding that oxygen. So please, women, one third of us are anemic. Don't be amongst those people who think they can wear that badge of honor. Oh, I'm anemic because I'm a vegan or vegetarian. It's just something I have to deal with. Let's get it sorted. Let's really look at iron. And on the iron front, since I'm on a roll, I just want to say iron is best from a heme source. Heme iron is two and a half times more absorbable than plant iron. Thank you for that on the iron. But back to mushrooms. I know you're a big fan of lion's mane. So speaking of performance and brain, so cordyceps is big for the body and endurance. We know, def Jesse and I for sure know it's good for memory and focus. So let's talk about your love for lion's mane. Oh my gosh, I had no idea until I tasted actual lion's mane real because everyone like buys it in packets, but it is so good. It tastes like steak. It's so delicious that for any vegetarian or vegan, please enjoy more of it because it's a rich source of actual protein as well. And it's just so fulfilling and makes you feel so good and light up your brain and have all that positive good juice. And speaking of a booster for the brain, something a lot of us are using, I know I get mine through my green tea, is caffeine. And this can be great for <laughs> boosting before endurance sport, boosting the brain before you get down to work. Yeah. What are your thoughts on caffeine? It's so funny. I resisted caffeine for 30 years. 30 years, I didn't have any caffeine. And then I fell in love with a coffee merchant who roasts amazing fair trade organic coffee. So if you want to go back and listen to that podcast, that was a really fun one to have Alan with us. So now I've let go and understood that caffeine has an incredible place for performance. It's fantastic. You just, you don't want to abuse it. As an adrenaline junkie, I realized that if you have caffeine every day, you can really burn out your adrenals. Those are the lovely caps that sit over top of the kidneys and make your stress hormones, but also your adrenaline and your noradrenaline, otherwise known as epinephrine and norepinephrine. You want to make sure to protect those by pulsing your amount of caffeine. So I take days off. Mondays, I'm intermittent fasting. I don't do any caffeine. And then on Tuesday, I'm working out heavy in the gym, lifting a lot of weight. And I love that caffeine rush so I can just feel like Wonder Woman. <laughs> well, I think it's kind of like the carb thing where it's like use them when you need them. Yes. So carbs, if you're going to be out exercising and you're going to be burning them, take in the carbs. In this case, in moderation, if you're going to use the caffeine for a purpose, working out, or if you're going to do, say, a podcast interview, or you're going to be using it for your benefit, then it makes more sense. You're going to notice that you have amazing performance because you haven't abused it every single day, right? Don't you find with green tea as well? For sure. And it, like Jesse's the green tea guy. He loves his green tea. Yeah. Tell me why I need to be uh, <laughs> continuing to consume my green tea. Okay. So green tea is rich in 
wonderful L-theanine. So they noticed with transitioning people from coffee over to green tea that after six weeks, people had a lot less cortisol because the L-theanine helps to relax them. So you get that beautiful benefit of alertness, but a relaxation state as well. Remember that people, uh, the wonderful Tibetan monks, drink six cups of green tea a day so that they can compress their sleep and do a lot of chanting and meditation that requires huge mental effort. The only thing to remember with green tea, it is a very high source of fluoride, especially if it's conventional. So if you have a thyroid disorder, You must moderate the amount of green tea. That's why I've fallen head over heels in love with yerba mate. I love it. I can only have a half a cup. (laughs) But it's just incredible. It's it's like three sips and I'm good. Yeah. And I just want to say to all the lovers out there, it's a damn aphrodisiac. It just makes you feel euthoric and connected. And oh, I love it. It's amazing. Well, let's go to compare and contrast stimulants like caffeine with adaptogens. So. Let's explain what these are and how we can go about using them. Sure. I do want to say with coffee that just recently there's more data saying it helps you live longer. So I understand people's attraction to it. Do you know it helps you type faster? It helps flush your gallbladder and your liver. I get why you love it, but you feel that roller coaster with caffeine. You feel that roller coaster where high, high, crash down. The beauty of an adaptogen, an adaptogen was coined in 1969 as a substance that helps you adapt to the level of stress that you're going through. And these adaptogens, they help you elevate your performance, but they never have you crash below where you started which is very special because if you can go up and then just come back down to where you were, you're going to have longer ability to hold your performance. So for those of you who want to rebuild your adrenals and keep the performance going up, 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 then adaptogens are the way to go. All right. Well, what are some of your faves? I love maca, you know, the Peruvian superfood. You can use that as a food. I really encourage people with thyroid issues like Marnie and I, make sure that it's cooked. Do not have any raw maca. It is a cruciferous veggie. It's high in actual those goitogens that will block thyroid. So as long as it's cooked, it's fine. It's denatured and it's A-OK. I really encourage women to consider just experimenting with it. It seems to really help promote hormonal balance. And for men, they love it for their sex drive. They love it for the gym performance. And a lot of guys are having at least a half a teaspoon in their shakes. And at that level, don't you find it kind of tastes like caramel? Like it's not so bad at that dosage? Yeah, what I find with maca is if you do go past the threshold, it really starts to throw the flavor, at least for me, of like a smoothie. But when you hit that sweet spot, it can really add to the flavor. And yeah, it's almost like a caramel. And it's really good for your brain, guys. Know that's a real brain tonic. So it'll inform the other hormones to balance, which is why it's so different. Like guys are really attracted to using very strong testosterone pushers. Well, that can have a little bit of problem down the line. We want to really encourage the body to do what it's supposed to do and have the testosterone balance. And that's why the MAC is really great for men. And what are some others? I know you're a big fan of ginseng. I am, but I know that men are best with hot ginsengs, like the Panax ginseng. Ladies, fall in love with Siberian ginseng. Marnie, Siberian ginseng helps to balance your blood pressure, which for an athletic female, we fight to keep our blood pressure normal. A lot of women have like 90 over 60 versus 120 over 80. And when your blood pressure gets that low, especially if you're fat fueled, your blood pressure drops. You really want to use Siberian ginseng to keep it up because when you have higher blood pressure, you have amazing focus and you can push through without having that dizzy feeling. So if you're feeling ungrounded, dizzy, really double down on the Siberian ginseng. And it's also just so good for your performance. It helps to truly increase your nitric oxide. And best form, just like a tea? Well, I actually do take quite a bit of it. So I'm using it in a capsule form, but sure, you can absolutely enjoy a lot of the traditional Chinese medicine formulations that are including lots of different ginsengs. Ashwagandha, that's another one. You know, it's getting a lot of attention right now. I see it all in so many different forms and powders and pills. And I feel like it's one of those supplements that's around and people use it, but I don't think people really know why they're using it. And I know I've been in that position where I've had it on hand at home. I know it's good for me, but tell me more. 
Oh, Marnie, it is so good for thyroid. Ashwagandha, when combined with Google Lipid, has been studied to help convert T4 to T3, which so many women fight with. So if you have hypothyroidism, you want to thoroughly enjoy ashwagandha. And it's just such a good mood elevator, incredible for healing your stomach, really helps to prevent ulcers. It's one of my true favorites. And I love that it's kind of considered Indian ginseng. It's not in the ginseng family but has that very similar elevation of energy, just that good vibe. How does somebody know if they're getting enough of these? So we've named a few here. How do we get them in on a regular basis and make sure we're getting enough to get a therapeutic benefit? I really like to make sure that it becomes part of my favorite foods. Did you know that I take ashwagandha powder and mix it down with nut butter? because it actually tastes a little bit like chocolate. Now, don't run after me and like whip me if you disagree with me, but it is actually, I have a recipe on my website for ashwagandha butter. And when mixed down with a little bit of raw honey, it tastes like heaven to me. So I think if we put it in a lot of places, we're accidentally surprised how we can really get to that therapeutic dosage. And we're talking definitely like funny, with capsules, they're only 500 milligrams. With food, You can put like a teaspoon and get like a shocking five grams into your day. So you can do better with food. And since you brought up honey, I do want to transition a little bit into some of the healthy sweeteners because I know, you know, again, eating more of a fat fuel diet, there's still room for some sweetness, even if it's not coming from fruit itself or dates. So what are some of your go-to sweeteners for some of these beverages or concoctions or smoothies or elixirs that you're using? So on my keto days, on my intermittent fasting days, I still use a lot of stevia. Just make sure to put it with lemon juice or cranberry to hide the taste. So everyone's worried about that licorice back note. It totally disappears. Would you not agree that Alan's lovely anti-inflammatory lemonade is darn delicious with stevia? It's amazing. (laughs) Alan makes for our Toronto listeners, if you make it down to the Brickworks Market, Alan is there on Saturdays. But such good, refreshing lemonade. And yeah, it's stevia sweetened, which is such a plus because anywhere you go to get lemonade on the go, it's like naturally squeezed. With sugar. Right? So just naturally squeeze that lemon and add a few drops of stevia till you really have that sweet spot where you're blown away that it's just water, a fresh lemon, and a few drops of stevia. It's so good. All right. Stevia is number one. What other ones do you have? I love monk fruit. Monk fruit is a non-caloric sweetener that keeps your blood sugar perfectly balanced, is totally acceptable for a ketogenic or low-carb menu and will give you a very pure sweetness that doesn't have that crazy licorice back taste. Okay, is there any others? I'm going to start with yacon syrup because that's extremely low on the carbs. It actually is only five on the glycemic index, which is crazy low, but it's mostly saccharides, and that's a type of carbohydrate that makes some people wince because even though it's feeding the good bacteria in your bowels, it often overfeeds your microbiome and you can end up farting. So that's one that you just have to make a decision whether you want to try. And then I would definitely throw in extra favorites, a coconut nectar. And of course, the ever-loving raw honey is just rocking. But talking about liquid sweeteners, you know, I know coconut sugar is a big one. And then there's coconut nectar. How are you using those? And why can these be so helpful, especially for athletic performance? Well, I love coconut nectar because it's actually tapping the flower bud. It's so cool that it's like maple syrup. They tap the actual flower bud and all of the coconut nectar, the sap of the coconut tree, drips out into a collection bucket and then it's cooked down. And when it's cooked down into the actual syrup, you've got a powerful a sweetener rich in amino acids, vitamin Bs, a tremendous amount of minerals, kind of making it a very popular drink for people who are really athletic. Coconut water is super popular, but coconut nectar is a higher carbohydrate source for athletes. And great for baking, desserts, all that kind of fun stuff. I love that it's stable because the problem with yacon syrup is it actually destabilized. When you cook it, you actually convert it, unfortunately, to a much higher index sweetener where coconut's way more stable and we can't cook raw honey because honey is so precious. So let's talk about honey. I know you love honey. You use it so much in your recipes. Why is it one of the more digestible forms of sugar? Yes, it's very high in pre-digested sugars, glucose and fructose, because the bee did the digesting for you. Let's remember, it's bee barf, people. I hate to gross you out, but the bees ate the carbs for you 
and then digested it and then coughed it back up again into those beautiful cells. But the good news is, is they made it an incredible antimicrobial. It fights candida. It fights bacteria because it's very high in peroxide. So enjoy raw honey. And that's why you got to keep it raw. Otherwise, you damage the peroxide and it just becomes another form of sweetener. But when it's raw, it's magic and very good prebiotic, probiotic. Love it. And just just so darn friendly. Like we've been having it forever and ever. That's the original paleo sweetener. (laughs) So let's talk about fasting. I know you said Monday's the day you do a fast. Is that intermittent on Monday or is that a full on fast? Well, if I am brave and don't have a huge week ahead, I can have a fasting day. But intermittent fasting has so many of the benefits of fasting that I often really do an intermittent fast. Intermittent fasting is different. Fasting is going without food entirely. Intermittent fasting is great because it means that you break your fast and have a short feeding window so you can keep your energy really good throughout the day. Now we're gonna take another quick break from the show with Julie to give a shout out to our show sponsor, Raw Elements. One of our favorite products from Raw Elements is Four Sigmatics Cordyceps Mushrooms. We actually love all their medicinal mushrooms, but Cordyceps stands out because it's great for energy and performance enhancement, and it tastes good. So you can put it in any elixir that you're making or any beverage, and we also incorporate some of the other mushrooms like reishi, chaga, and lion's mane as well. So you can stock up with those at Raw Elements and also know that Raw Elements has so many other incredible products, things like sea salt, things like coconut oil, lots of different kinds of chocolate, so many things that you can add to your cart at Raw Elements. And as a listener of our show, you get a 10% discount on all your purchases. And in the US and in Canada, if you spend $100 or more, you get free shipping. The products rock. Go and take advantage by going to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash raw elements. Again, that's ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash raw elements. Go and take advantage today. And now a shout out to our other show sponsor, Sun Warrior. Sun Warrior's proteins are created for the everyday person that is living in everyday life. So that's what's so incredible about all of their proteins, actually, is that they're so comprehensive, so well-rounded, that whether you're an athlete or just getting through the day like the average person, their proteins are amazing. So if you want to start using the hashtag protein for real life, if you are a lover of Sun Warrior, make sure that you share on social media that you love protein for real life. Jesse and I are big fans of the Warrior Blend. That is our number one favorite protein. A lot of people really like the Classic Plus. That protein, honestly, the taste is incredible. So make sure that you get your hands on one of the many Sun Warrior proteins and start using the hashtag protein for real life. And as a listener of our show, you get 10% off all your Sun Warrior proteins and all their other products. Just go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash SW. Again, that's ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash SW. For listeners in the U.S. and Canada, you can bundle your order together, spend $100 or more, and get free shipping. These products rock. Go and check them out. And now back to our show with Julie. How would somebody get started with this intermittent fasting? You want to consider how narrow a feeding window you can take on. So when you're first getting into it, can you just go from your standard eating from 8 o'clock in the morning until midnight? Can you actually lengthen that out? I want you to lengthen the eight-hour fast as long as you can. So say you cut off your food at seven and then you start back up again at 10 the next morning. You've dramatically lengthened your fasting period, but it doesn't feel that painful. Actually, a lot of people will skip a breakfast. Make sure that when you start eating, you start the clock, set an alarm on your phone and allow yourself either an eight hour feeding window, a 10 hour window, or if you're just starting a 12 hour window. I love the idea of using a timer there just to make sure you're bang on. And what are some of the benefits of doing this? Why would somebody want to put themselves through that? Let me start with your brain. You absolutely clear out placking in your brain that's in the background of unfortunate dementia. So you're going to get smarter. You're then going to have incredible rejuvenation of your muscles because the great thing with fasting is we break down what's broken and get rid of it. And then all the new growth of muscle is going to come back even stronger. It's absolutely incredible for people who are fighting a waistline issue. A lot of menopausal women, I totally relate to you kind of going, what? I just looked at that food. I didn't even eat it and it's wrecking my metabolism. What's going on? I really want women to experiment with this 
to really see remarkable results. I'll, I'll tell you about my sister who went into menopause recently and she gained 10 pounds overnight and she was so frustrated. She started intermittent fasting and she's lost 15 pounds without trying to cut calories, just narrowing her feeding window made a huge difference. And what I love about intermittent fasting is that you're using so much of your sleep time as the fasting period. I think a lot of people hear fasting and, and, myself inclu- yeah, and they get scared, myself included. It's like, I don't want to go all day long. So I, it's really approachable to say, okay, stop eating at seven and then have something at 10. Like I think people can work towards that, at least start with 12 or even 11. I think you have some information on 11, 11 hours. hours. I remember you telling me about that. So yeah. let's talk about that. Well, women who've had breast cancer, if they start intermittent fasting, they can reduce the breast cancer risk by 33%. So we really see that fasting helps to eliminate those damaged parts of your cells so that your body can kind of go on red alert to look for cancer cells. And therefore, there's a ton of good literature saying that intermittent fasting, ketosis, the ketogenic diet is wonderful for reduction of cancer risk. I just want to speak to the benefit for athletes because I know we're all about performance today. When you fast for longer than, say, 12, 14 hours, that's when you get into making your own ketone bodies. So your liver starts to cough up that beta-hydroxybutyrate, and that's what's going to make your brain feel really amazing. So don't be surprised when you're intermittent fasting, you feel high, you feel love, you feel connected because you have this secondary fuel source kicking in. So I love intermittent fasting. It's so good. And speaking of performance and a food area that we haven't actually talked much about on the podcast, I want to get into salt. You know, salt is such a complicated, complex area, especially people are, you know, obsessed with too high, too low and the wrong kinds of salt. So I definitely want you to start with what kinds of salt we want to include into a healthy diet. Why salt is so important, especially for performance when people are sweating a lot, letting that salt go out of their body. So how do we keep a good, healthy balance of salt in our body? We absolutely want to move away from standard table salt. Table salt is just sodium chloride with dextrose added to it. It's dreadful for you. If we look at unrefined sea salt, that gray salt that you often see from wonderful places like the Celtic sea salt, the French sea salt, like Herbamer, I really love it because it's got 65 trace minerals. And one of the safest sources of this wonderful unrefined salt is actually from Utah. It's called real salt and it has 65 trace minerals. But it's actually taken from a salt bed that is deep within the earth. So there's absolutely no residual environmental damage because if we are just having standard sea salt, we do have to consider that too. So just love that unrefined salt providing beyond just sodium. It's providing all those other minerals that you need as an athlete and so closely mimics the sweat that you're putting out. And for those of you scared of salt, I want to bring up a Coltrane review. There was 11 studies reviewed that showed that really a low salt diet did not improve your high blood pressure. Here you are going without salt, but it actually is not improving your blood pressure. What improves your blood pressure is a high potassium menu. So instead of saying, let's take away salt, let's put more potassium in. So let's talk about that. And how can we get potassium in? Which foods are we looking to? All the orange veggies are beautiful. All the fruits. Fruits are great. And especially for all those low-carb people, we want to have lots of low-carb fruits like berries are an incredible source. And if you're completely off carbs right now, avocado is a ridiculously high source. Maybe we'll have some for dinner tonight. (laughs) We will. We're having tacos. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. So just going back to salt for a second, I want to share a little story is I've always been into food and cooking for a long time. And I always limited the amount of salt that I included for whatever reason. And then I went to culinary school and everything changed. I started getting a little bit more liberal with the salt and shaking it into foods. And I noticed that things not only tasted better, but I felt better because I am someone with low blood pressure. So I noticed that I actually felt a little bit better. So I just want to put it out to the audience that including good quality salt will not only enhance the taste of your food, you need less. So you don't need to be shaking as much of that table salt, which you shouldn't have anymore, especially after listening to today onto your meals. But you're including that good quality sea salt, which will you know make everything taste better. And I know also adding it into water is really good. So for people who, again, are running or doing, you know, athletic feats, if you've got filtered water, especially you may want to add maybe how much, Jules, like a pinch or a teaspoon. 
A quarter of a teaspoon is about what I can handle in a glass. And then did you know that you're going to get way more electrolytes into you with just a tiny bit of carbohydrate? Did you know you can't even call it an electrolyte beverage without carbs because that helps to push the electrolytes where they need to go? So if you want to have that electrical charge, electrolytes being the minerals that carry an electrical charge, then just having that really nice recovery beverage. I have a wonderful ginger recovery drink that I have after saunas, after any athletic exertion, and it tastes great. And sea salt's also great for the adrenal glands. Let's talk about that a little bit. I love salt for adrenal function. It helps to reduce cortisol, profoundly reduces your cortisol. So if you're someone who's anxious, really enjoy more liberal amounts of salt. I think that's why we all crave like French fries and people are sitting there with their bag of potato chips. You're not craving the chips, people. You're craving the salt. So just give in, have more salt, and then you'll have less need for the junk food. Is there something specific that someone in that situation could do? Like in the morning, maybe have like a tablespoon and a glass of water. What's a little protocol someone could take on? One thing that I certainly do is make up my own electrolyte drink. Having some honey with a warm glass of water and some sea salt is going to ground you. In traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, it's the true way to help someone feel like they're coming home. And that's why they often will encourage people to have something salty, like having a ghee covered date is a really popular option. Really enjoy putting it in that first sip in the morning so that you can feel that nice pop of energy for sure. So are there any other specific nutrients that we want to turn to for better performance, things that we want to make sure we're getting in on a regular basis? Absolutely. We want to cover off vitamin B. If we want to make more energy out of every actual calorie we take in, we have to have vitamin B because vitamin B spins your Krebs cycle. So you take in empty calories from white sugar. Can you imagine what you have to cough up from your system to spin it through malate, citrate, fumate to make that ATP? It's exhausting. So if you give yourself the B vitamins alongside carbohydrates, so by having the date, by having that wonderful coconut nectar, by having our wonderful dark leafy greens alongside any carb, Giving yourself those B vitamins, you're going to not only fuel your nervous system, feel less stress, but you're also going to get more power out of every workout. So Julie, I want to get a little bit more personal now and apply some of this information we've been going over and talk about what you would do on a day when you need to perform. So if you're going to go on TV or do a bunch of interviews or go pump out a huge workout, let's go back to the morning and how would that morning start off? That morning would start off by often waking up and being grateful for waking up. I really try to do a gratitude practice where I say at least three things out loud I'm grateful for. Kiss my husband to pop my oxytocin for sure. Then when my feet hit the floor, I really turn to yoga. It's one of the ways I feel so grounded. Reduce that level of cortisol so that I can stay in an intermittent fast as long as possible. And I just want to say you break your fast on the first sip of caloric liquid. So please don't feel that you can have a highly charged coffee with a quarter cup of butter in it. You are now no longer in an intermittent fast. It's funny how a lot of people don't count that, eh? They really don't. And I just want to say there's 60 grams of fat in a quarter cup of butter and coconut oil that gets put into the average fat-fueled coffee nowadays. I do really try to have that balance so that my shake is got that lovely collagen powder. Also, enjoy lots of choline and inositol in sunflower lecithin. I think that's been the big addition I did this year that's totally changed the game because choline lights up your brain and makes you feel great. So both of those are in the sunflower lecithin? Yes. Choline and inositol are the lipotrophic factors you find in sunflower lecithin. The reason why sunflower lecithin, a lot of people unfortunately have lecithin from genetically modified soya beans. So look for it from sunflower seeds and it just will make any shake, especially when it's low carb and you no longer have that banana in there, it's going to make it thick and creamy and more delicious. So I just want to kind of go back to the morning coffee or caloric drink. So if someone's not using butter, but they're using MCT oil, where does that come into play? Because I know that that's super beneficial for energy, performance, cognitive function. Creating ketones. Yes. Creating ketones. So is having 
MCT oil in like a coffee in the morning, is that still keeping you in ketosis or is that totally oh, different? Oh yeah, you can absolutely stay in ketosis. I'm just saying that you are not technically in a fasting state once you have anything that is caloric. But don't worry, you can keep yourself in ketosis and you can kind of hang out in that nice long feeling of making those ketones yourself because the MCT oils from coconut will help you make that beta hydroxybutyrate and you will have way more energy and fuel if you stay in that state. So I absolutely love that trick. We just want to pulse it so that we're not having just one note. I think that's my big takeaway for today is can you just keep variety so that you don't burn out? Since we're talking about coconut, I want to talk about other ways that, because I know it's such an amazing performance enhancing food, whether it's the coconut oil or the MCT. Coconut? Oh my goodness. Could we make our own coconut milk? Can we make our coconut chips? Don't you think that coconut is the most versatile food in the entire universe? And it makes sense because we did evolve from the equator where we all had a huge amount of coconut in our menu. So I think that's why it is one of the perfect foods. And it does provide tremendous fiber for those people following a keto menu. It just is so delicious. So enjoy coconut butter, which has the fiber and the protein left in it. Just make sure to eat it raw in shakes because it will burn if you fry it. And then enjoy coconut oil, but know that the MCT oil is kind of the high octane version when you want all that benefit mentally, but you want it a little bit easier on your gut. It's got 93% of the caprylic acid and lauric acid, which is way easier on your gut lining. So Julie, I'm going to take a bit of a left turn here. Let's talk about how we go about improving vagal tone and how the vagus nerve is tied into this whole performance thing. So when someone has a shock, when somebody has a fight or flight response, they fly into their sympathetic nervous system and that makes their pupils dilate. They feel like they're going to get chased. So their pupils dilate, their heart starts racing. They have a flood of insulin. Their bowels start to go crazy. They're definitely on the run. And it can be really harmful because some people stay in that state. The beautiful thing about stimulating your vagus nerve, which runs all the way down your spine, is that when you stimulate vagal tone, you actually can flip back into your parasympathetic state where your digestion calms down, your pupils dilate and contract properly, your heart rate slows, you become more joyful again, you're not scared. And that's so important. I think that's the number one takeaway is if you could just really make sure that you stimulate that vagal tone. What happens in Vegas, baby, stays in Vegas. <laughs> Who doesn't need some uh, de-stressing here in the 21st <laughs> century, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about how we go about stimulating it. Yes. What are some of the top ways? The top ways to stimulate it is to first, ohm. That's why I chant every morning. And for those of you who don't have big chants, just do ohm, 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 ohm. It helps you get away from your negative self-talk. And then moving to a diaphragmatic breathing. So exercise is a wonderful way. So what are you going to do to really get that diaphragm moving and get some air circulating so that you can reduce your stress levels? So would that be like deep belly breaths? Yes. So yoga is incredible, but also anything that really gets your heart rate up, really work on your heart rate variability. So in the gym, doing stuff that really requires tremendous power, getting your heart rate up to 150 and then having it relax, really great. Then just go back and double down on your good fats. Your good fats really help. And the good news is, is when we heal our gut lining with probiotics, good bacteria, that also helps a tremendous amount. So I would love people to enjoy Marnie's book. If I can give you a plug now, I absolutely love your fermentation book, because it helped me get over my fear. I used to be scared of the science experiment, like I was going to mess it up and I was going to hurt somebody. And thank you so much for really helping me and that wonderful contribution to the hot detox. I love the pretty purple sauerkraut that you did. Oh, yeah. Getting that gut microbiome in with fermented foods is key. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know that that's another area, too. And I heard the gag reflex is another way to help with vagal tone. I don't know if I read that somewhere, but I yeah. heard like, not that we all want to make ourselves gag, but even if you... <laughs> gargling. You gargling, just have to gargle. gargle. Yeah, so take that salt water we're talking about and do some lovely gargling because if you really did that, not only are you getting rid of toxins and really helping kind of move things out, you could do it with oil. You could do oil pulling and then gargle with the oil and spit it out. 
that's a really like double whammy to make sure that you're truly toning your vagus nerve. And hot and cold therapy. Is that another one? Absolutely. Hot and cold is incredible. And this is probably one of the last areas I just want to give a big shout out to. Sauna therapy. Read the hot detox. There's so much good science in there. You want to stimulate heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins is the whole new area of exploration that I know you're going to have people blow up with whole podcasts on the subject because heat shock proteins will help you live longer. It'll actually help to reduce any sort of misformed protein. So it helps to keep the three-dimensional shape of the proteins and really ensure that you have the best future possible. So when we go in the sauna, we're increasing these? Yes. When you go into a hot sauna for at least 30 minutes, you are creating these wonderful heat shock proteins within your body that are really going to rejuvenate you. It does such a good job of removing these negative plaques from your brain that men that do four saunas a week reduce their actual Alzheimer's risk and dementia risk by 65%. Wow. Are we talking about infrared saunas or more classic hot rock sauna? Well, that study was specifically done at 73 degrees, but an infrared sauna does have tremendous benefit and it's great for people with low blood pressure, high blood pressure, and any sort of illness where they might feel too faint in a finished sauna. So the infrared sauna, I'm, I'm in love with um, the infrared permeating the body a little bit deeper and getting your sweat on because you're going to wick away a lot of the terrible phthalates, the PCBs, the heavy metals. They just run out of your body and you want to read the hot detox for more info on that. So just to get clear on this last little point here, either the hot rock sauna or the infrared, are they both producing these heat shock proteins? Yes, they both are. But the study I was noting was done at 73, but you have tremendous benefit at any hot temperature. And for those of you who don't have a sauna available to you, just get really hot, a hot yoga session, a really hot bath. Anything that gives you tremendous heat is going to elicit these heat shock proteins. Speaking of heat and hot, as we transition into the season of the fall winter, we're wanting more hot and warming foods. So what are some things that we can do to our body in terms of what we're ingesting, whether it's through beverage or food that can warm us up, boost our immune system? You're the hot detox queen. So what do we want to consume? And I am going to give you a shout out on your real treat book. Everyone go buy it because it's got a million elixirs in it. How many elixirs in there? I love that. There (laughs) are two hot ones and two cold ones. So a little bit of everything. Okay. Well, definitely enjoy that. We want to have more elixirs. We want to have more soups. I really love just taking our wonderful bone broth and just getting your blender out, pureeing in some fresh peas or some beautiful broccoli, broccoli sprouts, something like that to truly up that nutrition and get a more balanced thing. Or try taking some really nice shiitake mushrooms, sauteing them down in coconut oil, and then adding that to your bone broth, creating the most delicious mushroom soup recipe. And of course, that's in my book as well. Well, Julie, you have a new program coming out. I'd love to talk about it a bit. It's a 100-day transformation. Let's hear about what happens if people join in and take part in this. So maybe people are out there listening and they're really inspired and they've heard wonderful inspirations, but they don't know how to put them into practice. They can't seem to get traction. If you have a really tough time having follow-through and if you really need help, with accountability to hold your hand through the process of change. That's why I absolutely love this 100-day Meals That Heal Transformation program because I've made sure that people have the love and the support they need and deserve to make their transformation come true. I actually had one woman named Marg. She was really struggling. She was about 300 pounds and we worked together. I really got inspiration from how we transformed her because she lost a hundred pounds and now ran half a marathon in her fifties That level of transformation is possible when you have someone checking in with you. She had a personal trainer and I was working with a nutrition and that combination had her breakthrough. So I just want people to know that they can have that level because we have all the juicy stuff going on in the program. The support is so important, especially if you don't have people in your own life that are on the same path. Right. That's just fantastic. That's what I love is that we actually created this deep community that from South Africa to California to Canada, so a global community of health seekers that want to take their health to the next level. Every Wednesday night, we get together 
and do really deep coaching on exactly what you need answered. You can ask me any question and have it answered live on the Wednesday night calls. And I also do emotional coaching around cravings and food sabotage because I actually have training as an eating psychology coach. So I can dig under those cravings, help you break through. And then I also put a natural path in the program so she can really help look at blood work, help explain how to read your blood work so that you can have a breakthrough of epic proportions. Sounds so amazing and comprehensive. So for the listeners out there, if this sounds like something that it would interest you, go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash transform. Again, that's ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash transform. We're going to have all kinds of info for you, a little video you can check out, and I know you're going to love it. Well, what I really love is that I did a three-part video series that's completely free. So if you just want to get the essence of the program, three free videos will walk you through a real blueprint for change so that you can see how I got rid of arthritis, bursitis, and colitis and have helped hundreds of people let go of painful inflammatory conditions and have extraordinary athletic performance. So all that's going to be linked up when you go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash transform, you'll get access to those videos. Super exciting, Jules. You know what? We've gotten into so much information. I'm sure we could talk for another three, four hours, maybe. I don't know. We might need to do number five someday. (laughs) We might need to. (laughs) But if we were to pull something out or leave their listeners with one thing that they can take to help them reach ultimate health, one thing, what would that be? I want you to dream. I want you to truly ask yourself one question. What do I want to create this year? If you have a big thing on your bucket list that you've always wanted to do, Marg wanted to create an actual library in Africa and her amazing vitality gave her that access. What do you want to create? Do you want to really climb Kilimanjaro this year? Do you want to run a race? Do you want to donate an organ? Like what is your bucket list item? Whatever it is, I want to help you fulfill on that. So I want you to get in touch with what do you create and then know your vitality is the gateway to anything you want in your whole life. And with that, you can create your dreams. So Julie, how can the listeners go and connect with you after the show? Luckily, it's Julie Daniluk, D-A-N-I-L-U-K on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. It's uh, Julie Danlick. I love posting cool science and really fun, hilarious videos and heartwarming quotes if you want to check me out there. All right, we're going to link all that up over at ultimatehealthpodcast.com. We have dropped so many different things on the show. We're going to have a nice summary over on the show notes page along with links to everything, ultimatehealthpodcast.com. Julie, round number four. It's getting more and more fun every time. We're getting deeper and deeper. Thank you so much. This has been a blast. Thank you. I think we all deserve a good hot meal. Yeah. Long chat. Yeah. (laughs) Love you guys. Love you too, Jewel. Love you. Bye. We hope you guys love that conversation as much as we did. So much great information. I can't wait to actually go back and look at the show notes, which you can do over at ultimatehealthpodcast.com. That's where we link everything up. And also make sure that you join our group at ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash community. That's where the conversation happens in between shows. We are there every week. It is growing. There's so much good conversation. So come on over. We want to see you guys in there. I want to give a shout out to our engineer and editor, Jason Sanderson at podcasttech.com. He does such a great job with the show. Thank you, Jace. You guys have a great week. We'll see you over in the Facebook group and we'll talk soon. Take care.